I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family, peace, peace, peace. I am so happy um, today. Um, you know, I always say I'm excited, so I'm going to try some new words today. <laughs> I am, um, I am uh, elated. I can't wait. Um, this is going to be um, such a very powerful, uh, you know, uh, happy talks. Each one. It just it, it just gets better and better and better, and so we are always so happy to um, to have um, you know people come on our show and share their wisdom with us. Um, before we get started, I just want to just give um, some little shout outs. Um, I know I've been getting text messages. I've seen you guys on all of like our uh, social media saying that you can't wait, you can't wait, and I was like, I know I can't wait either. Um, you know, and so this is, uh, you know, this is this is going to be great. Um, I want to just give some some shout outs to uh, Rasha. Oh, Rasha Mella Combo. She's in the house. We have um, Black Silt and uh, Black Silt, if you guys don't know. So let me just give you guys the whole the whole spiel. And I know you guys know this. OK, but if you go to HoppyFilm.com, OK, if you go to HoppyFilm.com, you can uh, do a bunch of things. One, you can uh, sign up for the newsletter. Newsletter comes out every month. Black Silt, they're a, uh, a couple out of Atlanta. They, are, um, they do um, comedic yoga. Uh, so they're such a sweet couple. But they write our health article every month. And so um, we have a health article that goes out, a one-on-one like financial news with Appeal Federal Credit Union. They, they uh, write that for us. And we also talk about a financial innovator, someone who has laid the path for us to be where we are right now in terms of just, um, you know, our um, economic, um, you know, uh, pathway right now. And so we do a financial um, innovator, the um, financial 101, a health article, and then we also always support some type of black business. And so um, sometimes there's one, sometimes there's a couple. Um, and then we we give a little happy update in there. So the newsletter is really important. And also we remind you guys of what's going on on Happy Talks on that newsletter as well. And so it's really, you know, a good idea. Just go to happyfilmrightthere.com and get your, um, you know, sign up. It says get connected. You can do it, you know, right there. Also, we have um, digital copies. We have a uh, DVD. All the DVDs are on there. We also have merchandise. So tonight I'm wearing the the Nubia. Yes, the Nubia t-shirt. And we have it both in men and women, but we have so much merchandise in there. We have new stuff too. So it's really important. Just, you know, if you've already seen the movie and you support Happy Talks, but you, you want to continue to support us, get some merchandise and um, that would really help us out. And so it, this, this brings me to my next um, point. So a lot of you, and you know, sometimes when we're when I'm talking to people, everyone just thinks that we just do happy talks, right? And we love happy talks. Happy talks has been um, keeping us um, going through COVID. It's helping us um, just everyone. We can feel collectively our um, our level of wisdom and education just taking it up a notch. Um, but Happy Talks comes out of our documentary. So there is an actual documentary called Happy, the role of economics in the development of civilization, okay? And this two hour and 12 minute documentary uh, has about 30 scholars in it, okay? And some of the people that you see on Happy Talks are in, the, um, are in this film called Happy. And so it's really important that you guys not only support Hoppy Talks, which is the show that comes out every week. And the reason why we develop Hoppy Talks was uh, back before COVID, we had uh, scheduled a premiere of Hoppy, the movie. And it was going to premiere in New York City at the Schaumburg Theater on April, I think, 28th. 
However, COVID happened and uh, we were trying to figure out like how long was this, this thing, you know, going to go on and, um, you know, in terms of COVID. And so we didn't want to lose the momentum that we had built uh, with, you know, with the premiere, we had a, a, a small, a smaller like premiere at Megar Evers and uh, college. And we didn't want to like lose the momentum. A lot of people came out. It was great. And so we decided to just sit down and start talking to people that were in the film, scholars that were, you know, um, that had uh, was so gracious enough to say yes to us and were and were in Hoppy. And that's how Hoppy Talks came about. So each week, you know, we started off with Dr. Wade Nobles, uh, who was in the film, and it just took off. So now, about a year, um, a year, uh, t- uh, two months, Happy Talks is still going on. But we also have this film, and we've been doing screenings online. But you can actually buy the film if you don't want to wait for our next screening, because we will be hitting the streets. And we're going to talk about that later, but we will be hitting the streets with Happy. Um, so if you don't want to wait until that, you know, in, until we hit the streets and you see us in person, you can download a copy tonight. Like after you're done and you just, you know, take a little break, you could actually download a copy and um, and look at Hoppy tonight. You can also order a DVD of Hoppy. And we have two other DVDs that are only in DVD form. They're not on digital uh, copy yet. And that's the Tekken and Nubia. And those are Taki Grant's. And he is the director of Hoppy. You guys have seen him on the show um, plenty of times. He has, you know, two other films that he did. So Hoppy is like the third film that he did. But all of them you can get at happyfilm.com. Okay. So if you are talking to somebody and you guys are talking about Hoppy Talks, make sure you tell the person you're talking to that there's also a documentary and you got to ask them if they actually saw it. Okay, so it's very important that you guys um, support the documentary because then you'll see and then Happy Talks just makes more like sense to you. Okay, Um, I want to give a a special shout out to DM. Um, I see Sharon is in the house. Um, Byron, um, Akua, uh, Stacy. Yeah, Stacy's giving us a lot of little hearts over there, Stacy. All right. Diane Littles. I see, let me tell you, Diane Littles is in everything. I see her everywhere. She's always supporting. Um, thank you so much, um, Diane. Um, Hercules is in the house. George Ames, another one of our um, longtime supporters. I know that Michelle Jewell is someplace on here because she's always, you know, around. And I want to give a special shout out to our elders who I know are watching. Um, Dr. Uh, Rosalind Jeffries and Dr. Linda Jeffries, how are you guys doing? I miss you guys. Um, And uh, John Henry Staples, uh, he's from Riverview, Florida. Everyone knows um, Mr. Staples, so peace to him. Um, And I see um, Abu Shashat from the Shrine of Mayat is in the house. And uh, Leo Wright, another one of our supporters. So um, all throughout the show, I'm going to be telling you guys all different types of ways that you can support what we're doing and what Miss um, Bello is doing. OK, because she's doing a lot of fantastic things. And, we, you know, we definitely want to support, um, you know, support when we can. Now, the other piece is that let's just say you just don't have it. Not, not like one dime to support. That's OK. What you need to do is like this video. You need to share it with at least three people and then comment because when you comment, that helps us with our social um, uh, with the social media piece so we can get out to more people and we can get the word about Hoppy and the word about Miss Bayina Bello out to everyone. And so it's it's um, it's very important that you guys like and share this video. All right. So um, I want to um, without further ado. I'm going to take off this little banner right here. Um, I would like to introduce um, to you Miss Bayina Bello. And she is looking fabulous tonight, by the way. Peace, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me to Happy Talks. Yay! You know, um, and just, you know, I was just on um, Miss um, Bayina and Friends yesterday on her show. So this is such a treat. I didn't get you like two days in a row. And I tell you, this hair right here, you just is so you just so beautiful to me. So beautiful. I, I love it. I love the hair. Thank I was you. trying to get my, I was trying to get my little afro out today to honor you. And I was like, the little humidity here in New York just wasn't it wasn't working this time. 
Well, that's the way it is. When it's about natural things, you have to go with nature. So yes. you only do it when nature allows. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so before we even get started, can you just tell us some a little bit about you? Just who, like, who are you? You know, to the world. Uh, I don't know what I'm to the world, but the woman I know, Baina Bello, is mother of four children, three sons and a daughter, grandmother to 10 grand, grandchildren, and great grandma to four. So, um, and all her life, she's been striving to learn and to live by the principle that in, in Vodun, we exist so we can be better each day than the day before. Mm. So whatever we were yesterday, we can't waste time saying, you know, well, me, you know, I, no. You finished doing what you did yesterday. That was great, fine. Now today, you gotta go one step higher. Because if we are aware that in fact, in us live the divine, then obviously, if you're not getting better each day, you're not getting closer to your true self. You already started. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> yes. And you know, and one another thing um, that I want you just to kind of discuss, because um, on your show, you talk about three different um, things that are very important to you in, in three different categories. Can you share with our audience those three things? Certainly. Actually, I'm just repeating after Empress Felic Felicité of Haiti. Uh, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, the liberator of Haiti, was married to this fabulous woman and who stood all her life. And she, her life is 110 years long, from slavery to empress. And throughout her life, three things matters, she would say. Education, health, and justice. So that is why Fondation Felicité, which is named after her, we make it our business that we are continuously involved and working hard in the way of education, health, and justice. Without those three elements, we cannot be ourselves. Uh, a, a people that has gone through slavery has to have a very special education in order to get into their freedom mind. So if we call education going to the enemy's school and getting the enemy's diplomas, something is very wrong because in the slaver's school, you can only learn to become a slaver. Okay, um, I, I have, it's, it's burning up in my in my in my room, so I had to have the windows down, and this is like all types of drama happening outside. So I had to mute myself. Um, so yes, so can you um, talk to us a little bit about your school? Because you know I hadn't heard about um, this empress until you told me um, about her, and um, and then when I did more research, I was like, okay, your school's named after her. You know, I, I you know I was just following up um, about that. Well, actually, it's the foundation that we named after her. Okay. Uh, school also will be named after her. Even though right now the school does not, is not functioning, uh, we are still preparing and looking for the right funds, the right everything to get okay. the school. You see, because we cannot have a school that's going to recite uh, uh, Shakespeare, Baudelaire, blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. Exactly. Uh, we can't create children that comes out of school and when you tell them, oh, uh, what happened to a dream deferred by Langston Hughes? And they say, mm. what? What is that? You know, to be or not to be, that is the question. That is not a question for us. For us is to be divine or not. Mm. That's the question. It's not about to be, to be. If you weren't there, if you were not thinking, you know, talking to me, you wouldn't be in some form. So if you are uh, 
working to reclaim your Africanness, to reclaim your Aishanness, to reclaim your true divine self, then you have to understand the to be is not it. The, uh, you know, I can do what I want to do. That's not us. Because we come out of the philosophy of Ubuntu. I only exist because you all exist. And that's a fact. If there was no Marie-Christine Domerson, my mother, Yves Auguste, my father, would I be here? No. Mm. So I can't take me as the it all. You know, I exist because of my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my great-great-great-great-grandparents. And it goes on and on and on. So if I'm here, it's thanks to all of them. The person who held my hand taking me to school, the teacher who was trying so hard to teach me to make the letter B, and, uh, you know, whose name I don't remember today, but I must remember her and her efforts in teaching me how to read and write. The teacher who taught me how to shape my numbers, those are important. Uh, the woman who taught me how to make a bed, you know, she wasn't an aunt, she wasn't a grandmama, she was just a woman working at the house, but she was a teacher to me. Because thanks to her, I learned how to make a bed, I learned how to wash my clothes with my own hands, not the washing machine. And that's, that makes it very important. That makes me a free person. You know, the washing machine is there. I will use it. But I am not a slave to it. If it's not functioning, I know how to get my clothes clean. So we meet many teachers on the road. People who taught us how to cook, who taught us how to clean. All these are important teachers just as much as the person that we met in the schoolyard or in the school, in the classroom. I'm not hearing you. Yes. Okay. Can you just tell our audience a little bit about um, when did you, when did you know you were a teacher? Oh, uh, I've known that a long time. But my first teaching experience was with my grandma. I was about 10, you know, and she used to make us recite, all of us from Three United, it's all about, you know, learn by heart and recite. That's what learning is all about. Of course, that's not learning, but that's what we had. So grandma would line up everybody at night and, you know, you come with your book and you, we sing the stuff, you know. And then at some point I came to recite, I recited and I realized grandma was holding the book upside down. <gasps> so yeah, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and so when I hesitated, she said, you don't know your lesson, go study. But I know I know my lesson. I was just, <clears throat> what I saw, I couldn't talk. <laughs> so then I wanted to be sure I went back with a different book, a different lesson that's not in that book. And I recited, and grandma said, yeah, very good. So then I was sure grandma does not know how to read. Mm. So I waited a couple of days before I could have the courage to tell her, hey, listen, grandma, you making us, you don't know how to read. <laughs> so at some point she says, you know what? First of all, if you repeat that, you will no longer have a tongue. <laughs> That sounds about right. Sounds like my grandmother. <laughs> you are no longer going to have a tongue. Finish. And then, since you're the only one who noticed, you're going to teach me. So after everybody would go to sleep at night, grandma would wake me up and have her lesson. But before that, I was already a teacher. At three and four, I would line up shoes and have a school and teach the shoes how to read and write. I would teach stones and sticks how to read and write. Uh, when I had dolls, then yeah, the dolls would be in the school. But most of the time there was no dolls. But I would teach anything. And if we're playing with other children, 
I don't want to fight to be the doctor. I don't want to be the doctor. I don't want to be the this. I don't, I'm only the teacher. Wow. So it's, it's, so it's safe to say you are walking in your purpose. I, I believe so. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, nah, I could just sit here and just keep, um, I, I got a job to do, but I tell you, I can just sit here and keep talking to you forever. Um, okay. So let's, let's just kind of get started with, um, with our topic tonight. So how important is, is it for Africans on the continent or like just within the diaspora to embrace African sacred science or African traditional religions? In fact, I will not say how important it is for this group or that group. Mm -hmm. If you are you, mm -hmm. if you want to be you, then there is no, okay, let's start differently. Who are you? Okay, some people say to be or not to be. Other people say, uh, I think, therefore I am. Mm. That is their way of, perce their perception of themselves, which is not ours. If we look at all of our various sacred sciences, we will quickly see that we only recognize ourselves in the divine. So whether you take Egypt, for example, Kemet, okay, when you become a pharaoh, all pharaoh is clearly associ associated with a divinity. So this Cleopatra is uh, affin affin um, associated with Isis. This one is Ra. This one is Ra. It's not a folly. It is the recognition of your essence. And what is your essence? In the African structure, philosophy, cosmogony, our essence is divine. I am not this thing that you see here. That is the dress I'm wearing. I have a dress of flesh, bones, and blood, and I have uh, some other clothes that I you know, pick up from the store. <laughs> That's not me either. But neither one of these two outfits is Baina, because Baina is that spirit that gives life to this body. The body is nothing. If right this minute, as we speak, if the spirit that animate Baina would decide to step aside, then you would have this as a guest. That's it. The minute the spirit steps aside, it goes away with the breath. And somebody would have to come in, touch here, Oh no, no motion here. Touch here, nothing. Tick, tick, chest, the heartbeat, none. Finished. So the life is not the body. The life is the spirit. Now, every spirit have their own characteristics. So depending on which spirit inhabits this body, it will determine the type of things that you do. Okay. That's why when we look at Aishan Arstri, for example, when we look at somebody like Toussaint Louverture, when you analyze him, he has all the elements of legba. Very quickly, you see, oh, this is a legba here. When you study uh, Marie Claire Rose, she is Claire Maison Claire May. Health, education, justice. That's who she is. Uh, everyone that we study, we study Malcolm X. We quickly recognize the Ogu in Malcolm. We Ooh. see the Ogu in, 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 in Lumumba. It makes no difference who you're studying. You say, oh, no, I'm not into this uh, African stuff. I don't know this Ogu is blah, blah. Okay, uh, I'm into the Bible. So I, you know, talk about Moses. All right, fine. Let's study Moses. Study Moses and you find that's a legba. He came and opened the way to take the people from Egypt to this other place. And when they got there, he was not present. Joshua was there, the Ogu spirit. 
to take them to transformation. So it makes no difference if you take an Asian, you take, you could study anybody you want. If you cannot understand the spirit of that person, then you don't really know who is there. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. <sighs> yes. All right. You were continuing. I love, you know what? I love, I, I love that you have a regular um, mama house, <laughs> which is, and I listen, I'm, that's what's up. That's what's up. Grandmother of 10 kids. I mean, ten, um, ten. Yeah, grandmother of ten. Um, little grandbabies. Ten children. I don't ten have children. no kids. <laughs> I have no goats here. That's right. No goats. no goats in Haiti. But yeah, only children. <laughs> um. Okay. So you. So you would say that it's it's really important for us to um. To um. I mean, it, it's important for us to um to embrace. To know ourselves. Embrace this. To know ourselves. To know ourselves, yeah. that's really what it's all about. If you know yourself, I know myself, you and I have very little chance of getting into any major argument. Mm. Whatever it is that we could disagree about, at some point, I will say, well, of course. She being a, a Nazili Freda, you cannot by and I expect her to behave differently than this. This is her yes. normal pattern. Yes. And at some point, you're going to look and say, oh, yeah, Mama Baina, she's, I can't argue with her on this. This is, this is who she is. Yes. Nobody argues with a dog because the dog barks. Because we know that's the nature of dogs. We don't ask the cat to bark. We know the cat, the cat must meow. So it's the same thing. All the argument, all the fighting is because of a lack of knowledge of self. So that's what we need to be doing. Yes. When we, that's what we need to be doing. Yes. Wow. And as we seriously, consciously put ourselves to the work of getting to know ourselves. See, actually... <laughs> Um, I teach anthropology at the university in IT. And when I go into my class, very often students are just furious. <laughs> the first class, people just get very upset because they expect you to come and say, you know, this anthropologist, this French anthropologist, this British anthropologist. No, when I go in, I say, okay, okay, this person is a racist. Here's what he said. Here's what he did. Here's a that one is, you know, so... <laughs> Anthropology is a science of enemies. It's a racist science created to... So if we want to get into anthropology, we have to get into ourselves and then we look at it. And of course, then we also have to mention that um, Antenor Firme, who's an Haitian man, who for for all the years that anthropology has all this very outrageous scientific racist science outpour, Firme was the person who got up, went to France when he was doing his doctorate, and demonstrated that the adored the Gobino was the god of anthropology at the time. So he took the Gobino thesis and he smashed it to pieces. Mm. So this is when we stop this whole, you know, and you know what they did? For 155 years, most people never knew about Fearman's thesis. They say, okay, fine, yes, you pass, you write. <coughs> mm -hmm. We give you the best grade. But then your his book, you can't find. His thesis, you can't get to until almost 150 years later. When he starts coming out again. And finally, now it's in an English, there's an English translation of his thesis The Equality of human of the Human Race. Wow. You know what? This is um, Professor, um, uh, what Dr. Nobles has said this, but Professor um, Small always says, um, you know, when you, uh, when, you, when you know history, you erase the white man's mystery. And this is perfect case. Wow. Yes. Um, 
So um, you you, were, you, had, you started off actually talking about voodoo. And so where, like, where does the sacred science of voodoo originate? Like, where did it start? Well, as the children of Africa were kidnapped by Euro-Christian slavery and brought all over the world, well, they kidnapped the bodies. But did they know what was going on in the mines? These are superficial people. So all of the, that's why they had to do so much. They had to put so much ferocity in everything they did. All the killing, the castrating, the cutting the breasts of women, the cutting the nose, the slaughtering, the mocking the, the, the backs of people for no reason. Take a baby at the mother's breast and sell the baby to a different island. Uh, take a child if they see the mother loves the child, take this child and you know sell it like in the case of Bookman, Bookman was in Jamaica, and from though we have not been able to to go in depth uh, uh, about his mother, but obviously the mom was a revolutionary woman, and as punishment to her, they took her only child and sold this, ch this child to Saint Domingue. But that's okay. Look at what happened. The boy that is sold to Saint Domingue, he comes to to, to the like, colony with a little Quran in, hidden in his clothing. When the slavers saw it, they tried to take it from the 13 year old boy and they couldn't because he was fighting so hard. So they mm -hmm. decided to burn the child in the book and finish with that. So they did. Okay, Bookman became a Ungan in Haiti. That means he embraced voodoo. And Bookman became the person who spearheaded the revolution in 1791. See? So that revolutionary spirit that they wanted to punish the mom with, I don't know how the mother ended. I don't know if she survived, if she died, whatever. But her spirit stayed with her son, and the son continued the work of the mother wherever he ended up. So what we have to understand, the African brought to the America does not, just because he doesn't speak his language anymore, doesn't mean that he has forgotten all of it. No, just because he doesn't speak or doesn't, he's not allowed to do any of his, the practices. Hold on, darling. Let me go. Okay, thank you. So just because he doesn't give, uh, um, he doesn't speak the language doesn't mean he has forgotten it. And just because he doesn't practice his belief system, his spirituality doesn't mean that he doesn't know it. So we came to the various places, whether in Brazil, Jamaica, we created Obia. In Brazil, we created Lukumi. Over here, we created Santeria. Over here, we created Voodoo. But whatever we created, all of it is from the base of what we came with from Africa. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, wow, okay. I just gotta get myself together here. Um, so um, you, you actually mentioned some of the other um, African religions. So with with all the ones that you've mentioned, like what are ones that are still practiced today? Oh, are still practiced. Every, depending on where you go, you go to Jamaica, you'll find the people doing Obeah. They'll be talking mm -hmm. about Obeah. That's what, you know, but when you look at it and you go to, to Brazil, you'll see people, uh, Lukumi and different, what they do. You go to Cuba, you'll find them practicing Santeria. You go to Haiti, you find them practicing Voodoo. These are different names for the same principles. And you will hear many words will always come back. Uh, in Haiti, we might talk about Ogu Ferai, Ogu Badagri, uh, Ogu o, o, o Batala. We might, you go to Brazil, you will hear Obatala, you will hear Ogu, you will hear, it's the same principles are at work everywhere. Um, it's, okay, so, um, so Voodoo, you, okay, you, you said Voodoo, how, how did you pronounce it? Voodoo. Voodoo. 
Okay. Um, so it's it's considered just it's 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 like part of all the African um, religions. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is it? It's not a re, Is it a religion? Not a religion. Not into religion. No. religion. Right. Okay. But it is. That's what we talk. See, actually, Professor Small is very correct when he says African sacred science. That's mm. what it is. Okay. Uh, someone, um, let's say you, you have a problem. You in New York and you mm. call me or anybody who has some knowledge of voodoo. And you say, well, here's my problem. I have this, 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 this that I cannot do. Uh, how do you see me solve this problem? Well, I will look into it for you. See, is the problem psychological? Is the problem spiritual? Is the problem physical? We'll look into it and then we'll figure out here is what you need to do. Very often it's a fairly simple thing that needs to be done. Uh, I remember not long ago, a young brother called from France he was about to have major surgery for gallbladder stones. I said, oh, no, that's ridiculous. People don't have surgery for gallbladder. There are too many leaves that could send them out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we organized things for him. And a uh, couple of weeks before he was scheduled to have surgery, everything came out. When he went to, back to his doctor, the doctor, uh, they did the test. There are no more stones. Doctor said, but we should still do the surgery so we could be sure. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> wow. So um, is there a difference between um, voodoo and voodoo? Well, these people do whatever they want with their mouth, with their words. You know, they create whatever. So... You see, once the word is out there, I was asking uh, Eloi, one of the spirits, when the spirit comes through someone, I like to, that's one way I further my education. So I asked, what's the meaning of voodoo? He says, well, in which language you want to know? <laughs> so, well, whatever, you know, he says, well, a word, whatever it means in this language, will mean, can mean something else in a different language. So if you're not observing something within a culture in a specific language, then you can't talk about what it means. I just didn't think about that. It's sure, Ooh, it's very, very true. Yeah. yeah. Okay? And almost to, to, to confirm what the law said that same week, I'm talking to some friends uh, who speaks Kiswahili. And they say, okay, so they teach me two words, kaka and dada. Kaka means brother, dada means sister. All right, great. Couple of days later, I meet someone else. I forget in which language. Kaka means brother, <laughs> means sister, and dada means brother. The same two words in two different languages mean something different. And that's the reality of things. So yeah. it says, that's not what you want to know. The law, without I was asking the question, it says, that's not what you don't want to know what the meaning, each language will do whatever they do with the word. But what you want to know is what is the purpose of voodoo? We are in voodoo so we can build good character and be each day better than the day before. That's what's important. How does that relate to um, the um, um, uh, to to Mayat, like the Mayat principles? How does that relate? But that's what is the basis of everything. It's amazing. Once it's all about being just again, you into justice. Mm -hmm. How do you know justice if you're not educated in that way? Yeah. And what we call health, we tend not to see it, but actually, it's doing justice to your body. Mm. Yes. Creating, creating harmony in your body is what health is all about. So if you're not aware that 
not only must you practice justice in a social level, being fair to everyone, but first of all, you must practice justice here. Justice between the visible vaina and the invisible vaina. Justice within all the elements of the visible vaina. Example, at one point, I, as I was debating on justice, thinking on it, writing about it, then I realized, okay, when you read things like, uh, sitting down is the worst thing that you could do to your body. Okay, so if you're spending eight, 10, 12 hours sitting, mm -hmm. you are being unjust to your body. Mm. What does that mean? Okay, as I sit here, uh, the same part of me is supporting all the rest, right? Yeah. So I said, hmm, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be just to my body. After an hour or two of Zoom or whatever it is that we do, those things of sitting down, I go and lay my back down and put my feet up and say thank you to my feet for supporting me all this time. And th thank you to my buttocks that holds me all these hours. And I did this at first, you know, just something that went through my head. But you know, a few weeks later, I discovered this was the best thing I could do for me. That when you lay on your back and put your feet up 20 minutes a day, you improve your respiration, you improve your circulation, you improve your digestive, your ability to digest, you improve the elimination system. You do so much great things for your body. Right. If you're not a good exerciser, that's the best thing you could do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's also giving gratitude. You know, sometimes you know we only give. You know, like I got a new car. Oh, thank God. You know, so it's you know it's giving gratitude to those to even the smallest little thing. Exactly, being fair to your feet, being fair to your head, being fair to your hands. Yeah, balancing my art. Everything yeah. is about balancing, not doing excess this or excess that. Mm. Whether we're talking about food intake, water intake, movement that we put out, positions that we sit or sleep in, in every situation, seeking to be just. Seeking to be just, seeking to be balanced. Yeah. yeah. You know, Miss uh, um, Miss Bello, when did you um, when did you like when did you know that you needed to know about yourself? Like, when did it click for you? You know, um, were you like a young child? Were you older? Like, when did you figure out that I really need to get like get more aware of who I am so that I can be more powerful to the you know to you know to my purpose or you know to the world you know to contribute and things like that? When did you make that? connection? I don't know, is the most honest answer. Ooh, do you like know. honesty? <laughs> we like honesty, that's good. I do not know. I can suspect certain moment, mm -hmm. but I cannot say at such and such point, I knew it was about being yourself or no. Yeah. It sort of grew and became evident at some point. Mm -hmm. And I can't even say at what moment. I know, for example, around 30, 35 in Nigeria, uh, I asked a woman and I was fascinated with her wisdom and everything that she was saying and everything. And I asked her, Auntie, how do I become wise? Would I one day learn how to be wise? And she says, well, only time teaches that subject. <laughs> God, that's so true. That's so true. But then again, uh, if you can reclaim the memory of all the lives your soul has lived, mm. you can have wisdom that shock great scholars and even your great grandma would be fascinated with at seven. <laughs> wow. So 
I don't know how long I meditated on this sentence. You know, first of all, I didn't even see this whole thing of, you know, time is the only teacher. Time is not my teacher. I mean, I need somebody. I need a book. I need whatever time is going to teach me nothing. <laughs> the fact that you were even asking this at seven at, at seven years old about wisdom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that right there tells me you were already forward thinking, you no, know. No, I was 30 plus. Oh, 30 plus. Okay. Yeah, I was 30 okay. plus when I was asking that question. And, uh, you know, but eventually... I understood, I was taught, see, but the, the key exactly to learning is to question. The more you question, the more you will know. There is no instant, you know, uh, I went to college, four years of college, I have it this, five years of college, I have it that, seven years, da, 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 da. no, 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 no. You've been exposed to information. Now, the information has to, you have to take it. It's like a seed that you receive from the school. And you have to plant it and take care of it. Give it water. Give it the right amount of light, the right amount of, 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 of liquid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it will grow. But the school doesn't make you know. The school exposes you to whatever. It's like filmmaker. You could go and have two doctorate degrees in filmmaking, but until you make a film, there's nothing happening here. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> like nothing. And I remember my teacher, Holly Garima saying this in class. He was like, you know, cause he didn't really, he didn't necessarily like agree with education of um, like, uh, you know, like standard education for film. He would just, you know, the answer to everything was like, go make a film. Because he's like, when you make a film, you'll learn everything you need to know. And that is so true. You know, you, you, you know, and then it's sometimes it's nice. And then you go back to school. If you made a film, you go back, you're like, oh, oh, I can, you know, do this or I can tweak that. But really the, the doing is how it all happens. Absolutely. And in, uh, in Asian culture, we say knowing is doing. If you can do, don't tell me how polite you are. You know, I'm a very polite person raised in a right family, uh, da, 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 da. And you walk, you step all over my feet, don't say, excuse me. You you meet Felicia, you don't say good afternoon. You don't say, and you, you always talking to us about how much of a polite person you are, please, you know. You know, I I have a I have a little rule. Anybody I meet, and once they start telling me about themselves, like, oh, I'm this, I'm always on time, I'm punctual, or you know, I'm nice or whatever, I always think the opposite. <laughs> like I always think the opposite because I feel like sometimes we're saying what we want to be, but if you are just that person, you just you just are. So you don't need to tell anybody, oh, I'm a punctual person. You're just always punctual, you know. And so that's why I <laughs> I'm I'm laughing when you're talking about that. We'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll see. <Yeah>. We'll see. <laughs> um, all right, family. Um, listen, um, we just take a little quick little commercial break. Guys, um, please make sure you are liking and sharing this video. And I need for everybody, I'm gonna put up um Miss Baina's um Miss Miss Baina Bellows. Um, this is her YouTube page. Okay. You everyone needs to subscribe to this page on um YouTube for her, okay because she's given a lot of good information and um, her Bayina and friends uh, conversations are housed on here. So this is, you know, um, this is really important. I subscribed yesterday, um, actually during the middle of the show. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, how do I not, why is this not on my feed? So it was really important guys. This is how we support each other, um, you know, with this social currency. So please make sure you subscribe to her channel. Thank you. Yes. Um, such a good channel. So all, um, and all, and also family, we have, um, you know, make sure you, you're going to like, and you're going to share this video. The comments are very, very important. Um, and, um, also I want to, um, tell you guys, if you want to donate to Hoppy, uh, let me just put that up for you guys. Um, if you want to donate and, you know, you have all our merchandise, even though we have new, like, we have like fantastic new merchandise. We have water bottles. We even have some um, some new like colored t-shirts and things like that. Um, but if you just want to, you know, send us some happy love, that would be really super cool. You can do that. Um, and um, right there, there's our cash app. It's dollar sign happy film. 
And uh, you can also go into our website. There's a little button that says donate. You can click there. Or if you're on YouTube, you can do super chat there. So any of those ways and anything that you guys give us, we circle it around and we donate back into our community. So it's really important that we are um, supporting each other so that we can keep doing this work because as I'm pretty sure Ms. Bella understands that none of this stuff is not free. <laughs> like everything takes, you know, some money to kind of get, you know, to get some stuff done, to get some stuff done. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to ask you, okay, uh, let me see. I'm sorry. I had to take notes because I was like, I cannot, I, I, I can't, you know, like think that I'm going to remember you know, to ask you all these things. Um, so we we called we you, we talked about this a little earlier before we got on. You were telling us you were telling me about Viva. 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 Okay. And um, so, what is Viva? And is there a connection to the Andinka symbols um, and other African scripts? Most of the Vevas are from the Arawak people. Okay. These are um, Arawak heritage. Okay, uh, for example, the Grand Bois there is uh, definitely an Arawak uh, symbol. Um, some of the symbols are from different African cultures. Some of them, a few of them, most of them are from the Arawak tradition, the Arawak, the the, the Kuni, the Carib tradition. Okay. And from what I've been able to uh, understand. These are scientific figures. They were used very often uh, in the Arawak time because the, the island of Haiti was named Haiti more than, and worked as Haiti for more than 3,000 years prior to being to the invasion of Euro Christians. And they would use, like this, for example, this is the closest thing to what we we'll call ma'at. Okay, that's Aizan Velekete. Aizan Velekete, that's the structure of discipline, creation, and balance. Okay. And uh, they would use certain veve would be used by the Arawak for when uh, there was a meteorite, for example, threatening to fall on the island. They would trace the proper veve and redirect that meteorite. So these are powerful um, writings, languages, able to do that you could, when you trace a vava, you are intentionally, there are things that you want to get done. Okay. In fact, if you go back to that vava you just showed us. Okay. Interesting enough, if you go to Cape Canaveral in Florida, where they sent the machines up in the sky, there mm -hmm. is a huge veve of Aiza there. What? Don't ask me why. I do not know. Wow. But it is. Check it out. Now, while they're telling us, oh, this is a devilish blah, 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 da, 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 but they're stealing all of our stuff and using it for their own purpose. So what is important is for us to have our mind clear enough to regain our own sacred science and put it to work for us. Put our own intention, our own purpose on what we want to do, and what we want to use them for. Okay. Yeah. You know, you said something earlier, too, about um, this is like, you know, sort of a theme you're talking about, this reclaiming, you know, our memory, reclaiming our past. What is a, what is a way that we can start? Because you, you said that, um, you know, um, you know, you have to first kind of understand all your past lives. Like, how do how does one start to do that? The and is that for everybody? Well, everyone would be healthier if everyone was themselves. In a world where everything, look at the planets, all these huge massive bodies spinning in this huge cosmos, they don't go colliding on each other. Jupiter don't say, no, 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 I wanna be one. I wanna be in Mercury's place. Jupiter knows its place and it stays there and it enjoys being Jupiter. 
and Mercury doesn't say, oh, it's too hot being this close to the sun. Oh, no, forget it. I got to go. I got to have some breath. I have to have some cool. No. Everybody take the cards that you dealt with and you deal with your cards, the hand you have. Wait, that, okay, this is, I, I'm sorry, I had to take a little breath right there because this, you know, I don't I don't know if I feel like crying right now or the happiness. I mean, I don't know what, it's just like that statement is so, um, God, it feels, um, and I see everybody in the, the chat is saying yes, yes. So, you know, because I feel like, you know, and I'm just gonna speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure some other people might feel this way, but it's like, you know, you, it's like, if you can just know this as a kid, right? You know, that just be yourself and don't, you know, and 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 um, and you are surrounded by adults who are allowing you to be yourself. So you, you know, at a young age, you are so clear about who you are. You, you know what I'm saying? And you're not trying to, um, you know, like uh, change for anybody. You're not, you're not doing any of that stuff. It seems like you would just have, you would just be on the path of getting to do with your, your business so much sooner. You know, um, and that look that this is something that that needs to be at the root of any type of education. You know, before we can start to learn stuff, we you know, the first thing, like you said, is just learning like who you are and just being like, this is who I am. That's the key. Hmm. The key to becoming. If you are to become, then you have to start by being aware that you are who you are and assume who you are um and even you we carry as you know all of our ancestors in us and for years i was the type of person who says you know no i don't need no money is not important i don't need money i don't need a house i don't need this uh, knowing knowledge research da, 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 that's right you know. and that's fine and i understand that is the essence of my being. But still, where are you going to sleep, child? <laughs> what are you going to give the children? You have four of them. How are you going to do that? Who's going to pay for their school? <laughs> you see? But that's... So I was understanding one element in me and not understanding the rest of me. Because me, it's not just Baina. Now, with four children, it's Baina and four children. Mm. So I have to be me for them, too. But sometimes we miss out on that part. Okay? Mm. Four children means four different planets, four different worlds. You know, you can't have, a, like I had a very bad habit of calling, just say, boys, you know, boom to call everybody. I'm calling all four of them, <laughs> even though one of them is a girl. <laughs> laziness. But at the time, you don't understand. That's plain laziness. Each is a personality. You have to deal with each person the way according to who they are. You see? So not only must you be you, but you must guide those that has come through you. They're not your children. Mm. They are the children of the sun, but mm. they have come through you. And you have responsibility towards them to help them grow into becoming themselves. Okay? It's not, uh, well, I always wanted to sing. So my daughter has to learn to sing. She gets to become a great singer. No, maybe that's not who she is. Check it out. Look at her carefully and you will see who she is. Mm. Okay? Often I share with people that if you look at children two, three, four playing, you will know who, a lot about who they are. Because if you say something like well, while the four children are playing and you say, oh, I have a headache. Oh my goodness, my head is hurting. The health person will live the game and comes to you, mommy, your head hurt. Let me kiss it and make you feel better. Let me rub it for you. The health person will react. The other three didn't even hear you. Mm. Now, in a fight between two of them or three of them, the lawyer will show up. No, 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 no. That's not real. This one was real. <laughs> this one is supposed to be. That is so true. Yes. <laughs> okay. You bring toys for everybody. The engineer will smash up his toy because he's got to know how it works. 
So he has to pull it apart. And he's sure he could put it back together, but usually it doesn't happen. <laughs> so don't go punish him because he tears everything you bring in as toy apart. He's just trying to figure out how it works. Mm. The others don't want to know how it works. They would just want to play with it. But the engineers got to see what's inside. So if we have these little elements, these pointers, knowing that our experience on this earth is first of all and foremost about knowing who you are, then you have to also understand that your children are trying to figure out who they are. And you have a responsibility to help them to figure it out. So you can't buy the same toy for four children. When you have identify your health person, then you will bring the proper toy for this. Yeah. You've identified your engineer, then you know you don't want to buy no $100 toy for him. You want to get the $299 stuff because he's going to break it up. He's going to break it up. He has to. So... Until he knows better, those are the best toys for him. The things that move, that he can open up, break them up. Mm. You know, that's who he is, and that's what he will do. Whether you give him the $10,000 toy or the $2 toy, same treatment. Okay. So it's a process, and the process starts with questioning. That's the other thing. See the two-year-old again. You in a car with a two-year-old, there's no rest. Mommy, what is this? Uh, what is it? Why is this blue? Because <laughs> that's a sign of intelligence. Questioning is the best way of learning. And the two-year-old is best at that. But we end up saying, shut up. <laughs> Be quiet. That's the worst thing we could say to a child who wants to know. Mm. We must come up with answers for this child. We must take the time to, you know, recently I was with a friend and we stopped at a restaurant for her to get to pick up the food for us. And I was in the car with her four-year-old. And a four-year-old is asking me, what's the sign? What does it mean? It was dark. I had a hard time seeing what she was talking about, but eventually I saw it. And I said, oh, this is just a sign that says nobody should park here. She said, what? My mother is not respecting the law. <laughs> Auntie Bayou, do you know how to drive? Can you move the car? <laughs> wow. That's a law justice involved child. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. So when the mom, you know, I said, why don't you go and tell her? She has to come out and move the car, blah, 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 blah. She really, the thing was, she cried in the end. Because her mom's not supposed to be not respecting the law. Wow. Wow. So we have to be aware that as our children, our environment, people around us, mm -hmm. people will do things that, you, that gets you very angry, very annoyed. If you do not understand what kind of person is there, then of course you blow up and smash up and the association gets torn apart. Yeah. But once you understand, okay, here's, this is this person personality A. This person went to school and they learned their condition to behave a certain way. Mm. Mm. Let's try to see if we can help this person understand that's not the African way. Um, a lot of our people don't know about respect to elders. You know, we sometimes mouthpiece respect to others, to elders, but then our behavior towards elders is not necessarily, you know, there is no respect in the action. There is respect in the word, but respect in the action is in the action is not there. So then we have, okay, when something happens that is unpleasant to the elder, then the elder has to find ways to either try to help this person grow or distance yourself 
from this person. Mm. See, but it's it's all in knowing who we are. That's the key to it. We can understand. Uh, let's say I, I would meet a, a an African an African man in all his beautiful garbs and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then this person would say, um, uh, well, I love you, you're beautiful. Um, only thing I would like for you to go to the hairdresser and have a perm. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, I met somebody like that that said that to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. of all ages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, so the person- That's right. he was actually trying to help me. He's like, right. I'm trying to help you. I was like, okay. <laughs> Right. Thank you for helping me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll take you someplace where we could get nice gala outfit. I'll pay for it. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> yeah. See, but that's where this person is at. You have to understand. See, it's not the person is not being mean or anything. It's just that's where this person is at. So the yeah. person needs some help in helping them become a bit more conscious about who we are. Yeah. And for so long, so many of us did not have a clue. And we have been conditioned through church and school to aspire to become it. Mm, yes. That's the reality. Okay. Well, you know, I remember when some of the first university, black universities, tried to have some African cloth as part of the graduation. Huh. Yeah. A little yeah. African cloth somewhere was a big drama. So, because, you know, it's all about being it and not being you. And not being you. So, oh, yeah. So, okay, now I could see how, you know, someone like, let's say if someone has, is just really just um, has some undesirable behaviors and, you know, and they could say, well, you know, this is just who I am. You know, like how, do, when, when you're in search of who you are, when is, or is there a time where you have to look in yourself and, and say, okay, well, maybe these things aren't working for myself and maybe I need to develop some other characteristics or I need to fine tune some things. Um, like when does that happen? All right. Now the all is in the who you are, who you understand you are, okay? Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, who is Baina? Baina is her parents, her four grandparents, her eight great grandparents, her 16 great 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 grandparents, her 32 great 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 grandparents, etc. 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 So if I understand who I'm I am, it's all of this behind me, then I cannot say that the who I am, you know, that's where you're out of Ubuntu, precisely. You know, who I am, well, you know what? I want to walk like this and I want to, no, no, that's who I am. Well, from what base? From what base? Okay. Whereas if when you say, you know, well, I know that some of our great grandparents came from Daome or Nigeria or Ethiopia or yeah. so part of the who I am has to do with knowing the not the history, the history of that area. Um, when you look at the Mansas, for example, in Mali, justice was vital to the behavior of Mansas. Mansa in Mali is the, he's the king, in fact, uh, in, in Ghana, excuse me, in Ghana, the king, the title means the chief of gold. Okay. All okay. the mines of gold belong to you once okay. you are head of state. But as the chief of gold, you're not allowed to wear any gold. No. <laughs> we'll put you to sit down on a throne made of 24 karat gold, 22 karat. But you cannot wear any of it. 
balancing. We put you at the chief of gold, but we set limits to what you can do personally with gold. Mm. It's not I'm the chief, I can do what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead. The, uh, the servants of the pharaohs in Kemet, the more you had, the richer you were, the more those who serve you should be, you know, your servant should be wearing jewelry, gold, emeralds, you know, that shows how wealthy you are, wearing silk outfits and whatnot. People that yeah. some would qualify as slaves. The slaves had to be highly well put together. But some of those clothes that you could cloth that you could put on the servants, you cannot wear them. The finer things are for those who serve, not for the one who's being served. Oh, wow. So we have to analyze all these various practices and see. You know, it's not just a matter of, you know, yeah, Pharaoh, make a gold, blah, 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 put jewelry all over. There are stones you can wear. There are stones you are not allowed to wear. And more importantly, we never took a stone or gold or diamond or anything just for what it's worth. It's commercial value. That's not the interest. Stones are precious medicine. Stones have to do with character building. Okay. You see how in, uh, in some jewelry store, they might say, uh, if you're born in January, then you wear the stone. If you're born yeah. in February. What, why? Why? Actually, the stones, stones <laughs> that help to cultivate the qualities that you come with being born in that period. Mm, okay. It's not about showing off this is a $10,000 diamond. You could be wearing a ten thousand dollar diamond, and diamond is the worst, um, the worst stone for you to wear. Mm. Your stone might be emerald. It might be ruby. Mm. It's going back to knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Wow. Okay, family, um, please make sure you are liking and sharing this video. Um, uh, you know, I see that um, we are, we have a lot of viewers that are looking, but the, the likes aren't up there. So if you could please just like this video, share the video and make a comment. And also make sure you are following um, Hoppy Film on all of our platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and, um, and Twitter. So please make sure you are um, following us on um, all of those. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be the first person. And the thing about this is that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and same with um, Mrs. Bellow's um, YouTube channel, if you hit the notifications button, as soon as she puts something up there, or as soon as we put something up there, you get an instant email. Like, hey, you know, Miss Bello has a new video. So that way you are the first person to see stuff. She goes live, you can you know see her right away. We go live, um, it's the same way. So please um, make sure, um, let me get it up there, you know, that you are liking and subscribing to her channel as well as um, Hoppy Film. All right. So going back to Vadoom, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we took a little, a little detour, um, but it, it's, this is it's all good. Um, We've not taken a detour. Everything we've been talking about is still about Vadoom. It's still about the stones, and, what you do with stones, with yeah. metals, that certain things, certain people should wear this and not wear that. It's all in the do. That's part of the our global science, sacred science. Yes. And you know what? In the beginning, you said um, you gave a whole like statement about what voodoo was. Can you repeat that for, for us again? Voodoo, aspire, it, it is to aspire to make yourself each day better than the day before. Okay. The purpose of Vodum is to build good character. Okay. And there is also, there's a saying that we build good character so we can have a society of victories. 
Mm, a society of victories. Okay. So yeah. knowing yourself has to do with, if, once you work at knowing yourself, you, you also work at building your society. Yes. Gosh, uh, just imagine everyone just knowing who they are and be, you know and, and doing exactly what they need to do. Oh, that's great. So is there, um, well, how does like Vadum differ from um, Palo, Santeria, and um, and Candumble? Every social structure mm -hmm. is implanted in the artistry of the space. Okay, life is about time, space, and action. Okay. So, if I'm living in on the island of Haiti, you're living on the island of Jamaica. We both we eat corn, we eat rice, we eat plantain, we eat chicken, we eat fish. But how you prepare it, how I prepare it, there'll be a difference. What okay. combination that I'd make of this and that will be different from what you do. Because the evolve, the way your society is evolving, we use the very same things, but in our own personal ways. We all eat rice and beans. But as soon as if you put five plates of rice and beans on the table, I'll say that that's the Asian rice and beans. <laughs> this is Jamaican rice and beans. That's Cuba's rice and beans. But it's all rice and beans. The same is true for the science, for our sacred science. We use the same elements, but we make the personal touch, the personal situation, the artistry, you know, uh, Santeria. You'll find a lot of Spanish words in it. You'll find a, a certain elements that, you know, that is affected by the the history of that land. You come to IT, you'll find the voodoo, you'll find a, a lot of French words are there and you'll find elements that are affected by the history, you know. The biggest difference, the fact that IT used her sacred science to become free. Mm. So she has a confirmation of the use of the hypothesis, hypothesis that some of the other brothers and sisters have not yet had. We know what can be done. And also the world knows what we can do with voodoo, which is why it's continuously under attack, which is why pop, one of the reason there will be 10 different spellings of the word so you you asking questions like, oh, what's the difference between voodoo, voodoo, vodun, vodum? Yeah, you know, you actually answer. I mean, you're answering my next question. Um, was there an organized effort to motivate? What I'm sorry, was there an um, organized effort motivated by fear to keep Africans from practicing their traditional religions, and why? Absolutely. No, yeah. Not just an organized effort, but war. Mm. I mean, at some point, for example, when the U.S. Uh, occupied IT from 1915 to 1939, during those years, uh, U.S. military entered uh, many of the temple, killed the people, uh, burnt what they did not steal. I, be careful. Very often people say, oh, they burn everything. Lie. Not true. Mm. First they steal. Then they burn. Mm. But they wouldn't even know what to do with these things. Hoo, 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 hoo. They will. <laughs> but what is science? What you don't know today, you get to know tomorrow. Yeah. All you have to do is study. Okay. One such example, the University of Chicago sent to IET 10 scientists for 80 years Every year they will send 10 others, 10 others, 10 others for only one reason, to find out the recipe of the zombification. Eventually, Dr. David somebody got it. He got the recipe, he brought it to the university, the university paid him a million dollars. 
they did the, the various tests. And today, this recipe is an anesthesiology. It's used in anesthesiology as anesthesiology. It enables doctors to put you to sleep for even if it's 20, 24 hours. You could stay open and uh, the heart doctor comes and does their work. When they finish, you have also a hip problem. They do the hip whatever, and you have this other problem, they'll work on that too. So they can keep you under anesthesia for hours and hours with no fear. Because this thing is so powerful, it keeps you uh, so well. And when they're done, they will do. And the key thing about coming out of this anesthesia, which is from the our recipe, it is through music to wake you to bring you back. Wow, it's powerful. <laughs> God. But that doesn't stop them from pumping IT with all these churches telling Haitians, oh, voodoo is job, is devil, blah, 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 stay away from this. Yeah. Of course, as they chase you away from yourself, they're stealing yourself. You're stealing yourself. Yes, yes. I tell you, you knowing your history erases the white man's mystery. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It, and every time we say that sentence, we have to say thank you, Dr. Wade Nobles. <laughs> yes, thank you, Wade. No yes, and it's so funny because when he, he one time he was on our show, and I said the statement, and he and he was like, I like that statement. I was like, you said it. And he was like, I did say it. <laughs> and I was like, but Professor Small, I think he probably thinks Professor Small says it because he says it all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, those those two are are quite. Um, oh, they're they're wonderful. Um, Wow. Okay. This is, this is so powerful. Um, how did they, um, you know, you talked about a couple of ways of like how they, you know, they, they would take it from us. What are like other ways that they, um, or other ways, how did we hide what we knew, um, you know, so that it, it wouldn't be taken? Well, as I say all the time, you go to their church you go to their schools. Mm. They take you out of yourself. Mm. Okay? Imagine, I've gone to school. In the first grade, little girl, fascinated with everything. And I'm taught, um, in 1492, Christopher Columbus landed in IT. And he found the savages that were there, you know, the Arawaks. Before long, they all were dead. Nobody killed them. They were just dead. <laughs> and then the good father Las Casas said we should go to Africa and uh, bring slaves from Africa because Africa is not a country. It's not a, it's not a continent. It's not a civilization. It's just a slave fabric uh, uh, factory. So you, you study it without thinking. You know, every book says it. They just sent to Africa to go get slaves. So there were no people in Africa. So you, it just is engraved in you. Yeah. Okay. So one test we used to do when we had our school, Citadel International School, we used to say, to teachers when, uh, when we were evaluating teachers to know if we we're gonna take this person in or not. Two things that we would do. One is that we would show a picture of black people, uh, Asian person, white person, you know, different kind of people mm -hmm. and say, identify the slaves in this picture. Mm. Now, we would have a black man or black woman dressed in the best royal garbs and things that's who would be picked as the slave. Because embedded in our mind, African and slave is equal. Mm. Prior to slavery, if you read a Bible of 12, 4, 13, 14th century, 
the devil is red. 15th century, the devil is black. Oh, of course. And as they became rich from all the crimes they were committed against us, now they could create the images of all their white saints and all their black devils. So now the images are embedded in our heads, in our hearts maybe. Mm. Damn. So it's a very, so how do we, the, your question was, how do we undo? Well, the first step is to admit that you are not yourself. Mm. If you say they, Negroes, they black people, they Haitian, they Jamaican need to, you wrong. Mm. Yes. We have to say, I am not myself. I have gone to their church. Even if I'm not in it today, I'm still, I have plenty of it still sleeping in there somewhere. Yeah. I have gone to their schools. I have memorized all the garbage they've put in my head. Mm. And I am duty bound. I have the responsibility to go in there, have a revolution within myself to displace, to find sick, search and destroy their presence in me. That's step number one. And then I can begin to build my true self. Wow. It's we. Um, psychologists are the most important people in our society today. We cannot build any kind of, a, of an educational system without the psychologist side by side with this. It's not a matter of pedagogy. The first element is to know what's going on in the head. But you have to have, you know, to, to, to you know, if you're going to, you know, start working with us, you have to, uh, you have to have an African mind looking at us. You know, you know, you, you can't like look at us through Western eyes and then try to diagnose and treat us, you know? Exactly. So we need a, you know, our own psychologists. That's why yeah. people like Dr. Nobles uh, and so many Amos Wilson, who, you know, Francis yeah. Wells. Yeah. They did. The, 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 Dr. This, Patricia this. Newton. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So these are vital people. You know, I can't say that's why we cannot say things like, oh, no, I'm an educator. I'm not into psychology. Well, then you're not an educator yet, my darling. Mm. Because if you don't understand the psychology of what brought us there, how are you going to educate us? You can only condition us. You can oh. Wait, stop. <laughs> you said, you, how are you going to educate us? You can only condition us. Yes. Oh, my, my. Okay. Oh. You can only condition us. We have to be able to to be able to educate, we have to understand the invisible crimes. The physical crimes are nothing, but the invisible crime, the, the, the stuff that makes that a brother looking at you would say, oh, yeah, that sister is too dark. Her hair is too, I can go out with this sister. You know, and a person speaking may be twice as dark as both of us, <laughs> but in his head, out of his mouth, it's a white person speaking. Yes, yes, yes. So if we don't understand these things, you know, you'll find people who tell you, oh, Mrs. Bello, you're so beautiful, but if only... <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the if, it's the if, you know, it's the, it's always that little if. <laughs> and as soon as we hear it, people like me, I say, all oh, right, 
<laughs> You're a Christian. Go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> and I will not get angry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the reality. It makes no difference what we want. You know, some say, well, but you see, this is scientific. You can't be, you know, what you're talking is history. It's, you know, that's the past. First of all, you don't understand history because, in which I do prefer to call Ari, mm. not his story. Because as far as I know, all societies have women, men, children, elders, animals, plants, and all of it participate in the contribution to the evolution of the space. So I cannot call what's, what happened there his story, no. So it's our artistry. So when we study our artistry, we have to understand that without the light from the past, you cannot understand the present. Absolutely, Sankofa. You cannot understand, yeah. the, there is no way. You can make big speeches. Well, we all know how to, you know, talk. <laughs> yeah, we could go on about democracy and blah, 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 freedom, abolition, all kind of stuff. But to understand why you're standing where you are in this position under this condition, you must have the light from the past. And it is that same light that shines on the present, enables you to understand the present. It also gives you direction to the better tomorrow. So artistry is past, present, and future together. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, um, I, you know, I was, um, I was wondering, you know, I was thinking about this, um, in terms of, you know, I was thinking about my, my, um, uh, like part of my family, my, my grandmother's side, they come from South Carolina. Right. And there's a lot of things that my mother does. Right. That, um, because it, this is, this goes along with what you're saying. So there's a lot of things that my mom does. And when I asked her, I was like, well, why do you do that? Like, why do you, you know, when you're cleaning, you're putting like salt here, you know, just like just different things. And, she didn't really know why, but she just remembers that her 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 um her father did it, right? And you know, and so she was like, "Well, just just kind of what you know, like what we do." And so then now I do it, but not understanding, you know, like where like where that all comes from. And so when you know you were talking about, um, you know, like it, it seems like in reclaiming our history, you know, and it's reclaiming, you know, who we were is that um, there's, you know, just kind of starting with what we actually just do right now could literally, you know, be a key into, you know, figuring out um, who we are and just, you know, and, and adding on to it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, there is no, there is nowhere, no place do we exist without some form of voodoo. Ooh. African American, Jamaican, Trinidad, I don't care who. Wow. The African spirit didn't stop on this at sea and kill herself or kill himself. The spirit traveled in your body. And wherever you arrived, spirit was there. And the mental sacred science was there with you whether it has become diluted, mixed with other things, you will find that in some places you go and do, you have all the Catholic saints on the wall. Yeah, that's part of it, but it's there. When things get serious, <laughs> it's so funny, I, I laugh so often in, in our various ceremonies, everything starts with, you know, uh, Holy Father in heaven, blah, 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 blah. We are Catholic <laughs> prayer. And just hold on. You know, at first I would just get angry and get up and walk out. <laughs> I don't want to hear that nonsense. <laughs> Until I got a little smarter and stayed and looked. And so there was maybe the first 10, 15 minutes, there's all this, you know, Holy Father stuff that goes on. And then the serious matters come. 
Let my own like who I Then the voices start to sound, whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay. So then I came to understand. See, when you first start, you sort of have to act a certain way just in case you were being spied on. Mm, yes. You have to threaten people at ease. They have to feel that these are good niggas. Mm. <laughs> they don't have to worry about them. They're reciting the Holy Father, Holy Mother, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great. Wow. Okay, now let's get to some real stuff. <laughs> let's get to some real stuff. Absolutely. Yes. So uh, there is a lot, and it's everywhere. There is nowhere I've never been any place that I didn't see our people having our own, an expression of our African spirituality, no matter where. No matter where. Ooh. Everywhere we are, Voodoo is present. Whether you call it Santeria, you call it Obia, you call it whatever. But taking the African spirituality, taking the African sacred science and creating an expression that is in harmony with the artistry and the space where you are. That's reality. That's reality. Wow. Um, this is, this is um, actually, this is my last question. What was like the role of women in African traditional religions? All right. Uh, let's start in IT. The, the, the power that is in charge in IT is a woman called Ezili Danto. Mm. It's a female warrior spirit. She's number one. When it comes to getting any serious work done, that's who you have to address. Wait, um, say her name one more time. Ezili Danto. Okay. All right. Uh huh. Now, every expression of any of our uh, um, uh, divine principles are always expressed in a couple. Mm -hmm. You have the female and the male. In our language, we don't say men and women. We say women and boys. Mm. Wow. You really speaking in Aishan terms? Femme a garçon. Okay. So, and when we look at that's one of the things that brought me to really research what were the women doing in that ashram? Because once I studied the, the practices in Vodun, the, the hypothesis in Vodun, I couldn't understand that we would have a story that goes, he did, he did, he did, he did, he did, he did, and there was no she, nowhere. Impossible. Mm. We are spirit inhabiting a body. So in, if, in our spiritual world, we have all these she, 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 she's. Well, I have to find an, uh, they have to be present in the R3 as well, the physical R3 as well. can't do it that way without, you know. So that's why it's so important for us to understand. I am a spirit experiencing the finite world within a body. It can even happen that right now you kill this body that you call Bayina. That spirit just drops that body and hop into another and continue the work. And continues to work. So being attached to the body will make you not understand your spirit. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Did somebody just say grandma? <laughs> Are they yelling for grandma? That's I love it. So being attached to the body um, will not allow you to know your spirit. 
wow. Yeah. Because you're so busy, you know, I have to have the right makeup, I have to, uh, yeah. that's what, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to be interviewed by Felicia. She was so beautiful and joyful and open yesterday. I want to return it to her. So and bring her out of me. See, uh, so the preparation is, if I do a spiritual preparation, I don't have to worry about what will come out. Mm, yes. But if yes. I went and got some books and want to know, you know, if she asked me this, I will say that. If <laughs> you know what, let me tell you, I, I was sitting here and um and uh my my um my buddy, my my compliment here, uh Taiki, we you know, we always we we brainstorm and he's, you know, we come up with questions, right? And, um, and you know, as a, just as a guide, so we don't just stare, just like stare at the person we're interviewing. And so like right before, you know, a lot of times it seems like in the middle, I'll, I'll be like, ah, I forgot to check in with my, with my little people. And, you know, this time I was like, okay, let me, and let me just kind of do some things in reverse. Let me start off with, you know, gratitude and with me saying, listen, um, you know, I don't know what we're supposed to be doing, but I'm sure you're gonna guide me, you know, and I'm open, just let me know what I need to let everybody else know, you know, and and that way makes, um, it makes you feel so much more calm. It makes you feel more like, okay, you're just doing what you have to do, you know? And so I really appreciate you for um, saying that. And I have to say, thank you so much for having me on your show. Like I, I was just like this, it was such a, um, a good experience. And anybody I'm telling you, you have to subscribe to her channel. You have to, you, she does deep breathing. You have to, she re reads a poem. I mean, it is, it was fantastic. Um, well, you know, I just want to thank you. <laughs> I just, I just, just keep, you know, saying thank you. I thank um, you. Yeah. Um, seeing younger women like yourself make us give us the serenity that mm. tomorrow will be a lot better than what today is. Oh my! That is thank very you. important for us. For our, and I, I'm sure I speak for our generation. Every time we meet a young woman, a young man, who has decided to walk that walk yeah. and pay the price. It's an expensive price. Mm. Uh, so we're very, very, very happy. We are thrilled and it makes tomorrow looks a lot brighter. So thank you very much for oh. what you do. You know, that's the same way, <laughs> that's how we feel when, you know, um, when we are just lucky enough to, you know, be able to talk, you know, like, you know, just being able to talk with you. Um, and I have to thank um, Diane because Diane was the first person. She spoke to um, Professor Small and she's like, you got it. You have, you know, you got to talk to Miss um, Bello. And I was like, oh my God, I got to talk to Miss Bello. And, you know, I just, um, I'm just so, um, I'm just so honored, you know, when you and, you know, all the elders just sit down and just want to teach us. You know, and I, I know I speak for everybody that's blowing up the chat right here, <laughs> right now, because we're just so honored that you guys are sharing your stories and you keep sharing it. And it seems like you have endless energy and, um, you know, you just want us to, um, you know, just to be OK. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, do you have um, like two minutes to take a couple of little questions from the audience? OK, <laughs> so this is one. Um, can you just, uh, oh, okay, they just want to know, um, can you tell us again the name of the divine feminine who embodies health, education, and justice? Clermesine Clermeil. Okay. Clermesine Clermeil. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, let me see. I know there's, um, okay, did you, let me see. Um, Oh, everyone's just just giving thanks. And <laughs> can you see the chats on your side? I think you can. Yes, I can. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I don't usually look at it, but yes, I can. Well, yeah. big greetings to all of you in the chat. Thank you, thank you for the interest. Thank you for being present. And I see some of, of our folks from uh, Baina and Friends. Mohammed, how are you? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Thoroughbred Books, Friends. We're yes. happy to see you too. Yes. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you to all. Yes, and so you know what? Okay, guys, you have to go on to her, um, on to right here. This is the official um, YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe to her channel, okay? This is how we take, this is how we show respect. It's just like we were talking about before. Like sometimes we talk about, oh, we respect the elders. Oh, we're down for the cause. Well, this is how you could, this is action right now. Just hit the subscribe button and that little notifications button. This is how we actually do the work. You know, um, a lot at um, here at Hoppy, you know, we have these talks and we, you know, we love um, the exchange that we have um, back and forth with, with elders, but they always leave us with some action. You know, because we, what we do has to be anchored in action so that we can move our people forward. OK, so this is a easy way right here. Make sure you subscribe um, to her YouTube channel. Um, and this is her foundation. Are you guys taking um, donations right now? Yes. yes. OK, mm -hmm. come on right now. Right here, you guys <laughs> donate. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Las Vegas or something. I don't know where any of those places where they're like, you know, getting people to do stuff. But this is, you know, um, you know, and if you can spare, um, if you can spare something, please make sure you, you know, donate um, to um, Miss uh, Mayina Bello, her foundation. Yeah, this is. There's also the PayPal. I just give you the PayPal. Oh, okay. That's All right, I'm gonna put her her easier. Okay. And there's also a cash shop. Oh, okay. Wait, Miss Brian, you know she got it all. She got the cash app, the PayPal. Well, you know, I have <laughs> a, a young people around me who say, you know, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. So, yes. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Let me get this. Okay. Yeah. So it was very important, you know, guys, that, um, you know, we can't do everything um, all at once. You know, a lot of us are, you know, um, have different things that we're doing. And so when you find people that are doing something that you believe in, you know, you may not, you know, physically be able to go um, and, you know, and help Miss Bello, right, you know, um, you know, help her do everything. But you can definitely, you know, donate some money so that she can, you know, um, get her mission accomplished because all these organizations have missions. Hoppy has a mission. Miss Bello has a mission, and so it's really important that we, you know, um, you know, that we just support support the work. Definitely support the work. Okay. Well, um, Miss um, Miss Bello, thank you so much for um, for coming on. This was uh, this was fantastic. But let me tell you, this is also just a an opening for you to make sure you come in, um, come back. And I know that um, it, this is this is such a uh, a nice treat for us because we have we've had and I said this yesterday I was like we've had your compliment on which is Professor Small, and so this like you guys together we have to just sit down and you know have a happy talks with both of you because this is it's so nice to um to get this feminine side you know of the same of the same thing you know the same sacred sciences so thank you so much um, for coming on. You, you have any parting words? Thank you very much. And to all of you who are following or who will look at it tomorrow or next week or the month after that, remember, you are divine. And your true and first mission. <laughs> the babies, the babies. <laughs> Your true and first mission is to get in touch with your divine self. By getting in touch with your divine self, getting to know yourself, practicing the principles at work in you, that's how we build power. The biggest crime against us is to have made us forget who we are. Mm. Not the cutting of the nose and cutting of the arms, the castration. Yes, these were big crimes, but the biggest crime is to make us forget who we truly is, our divine self. And the second crime is to tamper with our artistry, turn it into whatever they wanted, make their own narratives. 
So we must reclaim both our artistry and our memory. And know this, uh, Sylvester, an African-American poet, says it best. Minute after minute, hour after hour, as you forget your history, you lose your power. So go back, reclaim our artistry. Every bit of it is important and start right in the family. If you don't yet know the name of your grandparents, you must know those four people. That's you. We claim, even if you know nothing else but their name, or first name for each one, but you must know all four. It's vital. Then you tackle for the eight behind them. And then you try as well. But if you stay as a lonely, you know, I don't know my family, you know, I'm disconnected, but you know, you're not even dust. Ooh. You are not even dust and you can have all the titles in the world. It will serve no collective. Because for you to be able to serve any collective and the first collective is the family, for you to be able to serve the collective, you must yourself be whole. You must be yourself. And when you are yourself and you know your artistry, then yeah. you are empowered to serve the community. So don't criticize the brother who is a congressman and stealing all the money or who is at the head of this clinic or that and wasting things away. It's not his fault. He does not know who he is. Oh. The important thing is for you to work at knowing who you are. So if tomorrow you are in his place, we won't see you doing exactly what he used to do. Yes. See you and be powerful. Be, be you and be, yes. Oh my gosh, be you and be powerful. Listen, everybody, this is her PayPal. Um, uh, her PayPal makes it easier. And there's her cash app. Please show this elder some love. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bayona Bello. And let me tell you, this is your second home. So you can come back. <laughs> In fact, I know you're going to be coming back. <laughs> we'll thank back. you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Um, gosh, I don't even know. Um, just... Just, yeah, um, please, this is her um, information. Please make sure you um, uh, show her some love. Um, you know, um, she was very gracious to come out and, um, and really just, you know, just lay out some stuff for us. If you are not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so that we can continue to bring programming like this. Um, yep, so this is like, that's right. Yes. And I just want to um, thank you. I saw some more people come in. Um, Kati Santil. Um, uh, thank you. Um, uh, I see you in the chat. Um, Sharon, pseudo charlatans. Um, I want to say, you know, thank you all um, for coming in and tuning in. And um, if you have more love to, to give, make sure, you know, you give, there's some little happy love you can give. There's always happy love. Um, there's our cash app. You can go onto our hoppyfilm.com. We have merchandise, we have um, DVDs. And remember, if you have not seen the actual documentary, okay, we have a documentary. Please go to hoppyfilm.com to get um, to you know to get your copy of Hoppy. So um, next week we are uh, really super excited to have um, Surviving Vegan on our show. And she's going to come bringing us the, the, the health. So make sure you tune in. So without further ado, I like to, I like to use um, an elders like words uh, that they always say um, at the end. And I know I've been using Professor Small's um, words because he's, he's, he's always saying this. But 
I just want to say peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?